Thank you. Thank you. Let's see you do that when I'm done. I thought Harold was going to say, and here's Johnny. I, you know, I, I thought that's where you were going with that. But I was surprised to learn, and what I'm about to tell you, I'm not making up. I was surprised to learn that a group of vultures waiting around together to feast on leftover carnage is called a committee. No joke. That explains a lot, doesn't it? Huh? A couple had two little boys, ages 8 and 10. They were excessively mischievous. The two were always getting in trouble. The parents were at their wits' end. They didn't know what to do about their son's behavior. The mother heard that there was a youth pastor in town that had been successful in disciplining children in the past. So she asked her husband if they thought they should send the boys to speak with a minister. The husband said, why not? What have we got to lose? The pastor agreed to speak to the boys, but he said, I want to see you individually. The eight-year-old went to meet with him first. The minister sat the boy down, looked at him sternly, and said, I have a question for you. Where is God? The boy made no response. The pastor repeated the question a little more sterner. He said, I said, son, where is God? Again, the boy made no attempt to answer, so the pastor raised his voice a little bit more and said, I'm going to ask you one more time, where is God? At that, the boy bolted from the room. He ran directly home, shutting himself in his closet. His older brother followed him. He said, what happened? The younger brother said, we're in big trouble this time. God is missing, and they're trying to pin it on us. <laughs> But what happened next is what keeps this Christmas as the most talked about in our family nearly 30 years after it happened. Uncle Alonzo bent down and attempted to pick up the gravy boat, underestimating both the size and the weight of it. He grunted a bit and pulled hard as he reached, and just then his teeth fell out <laughs> and plopped into the gravy. The sounds around the table were varied and immediate. <laughs> to my right where my mother and most of the other adults sat, you could hear gasps and forks dropping. <laughs> to my left, especially where my little brother sat, you could hear immediate and not well-disguised snickers. <laughs> I sensed every mother at the table instantly reach for their kids, including my mom who actually put her hand over my mouth <laughs> to keep me from bursting out loud with laughter. Aunt Rose got up from her place and touched Uncle Alonzo on the arm, who seemed to be more concerned with the gravy on his shirt than anything else. Here, she gently said, let me get that for you. Just as, he, just as she was reaching for the gravy boat, Uncle Alonzo shocked everyone by slapping her hand away. I got it, he said. And with that, he dipped two bony fingers <laughs> into the gravy and fished out his teeth. I felt my mother recoil in disgust at the sight of this, but I have to tell you, I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> Without missing a beat, Uncle Alonzo drained his dentures for a second and then slipped them back into his mouth. He looked right down at me and winked and said, now that's how you eat gravy, boy. <laughs> What could I do? I was nine years old and had just witnessed the most incredible bit of entertainment ever at Christmas dinner. My mother's hand was still firmly clamped over my mouth, so I clapped. <laughs> Immediately, everybody else clapped too, and Uncle Alonzo had the presence of mind to take a little bow. <laughs> Isn't that a great story? I love that. Even the terms falling in love is used as if love is an accident, like stumbling down a staircase or falling into a ditch. The problem with this definition is if you can accidentally fall in love, you can accidentally fall out of love too. You, you simply follow your feelings, and when you've lost that love and feeling, it's gone. 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 Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. 
Well, you're a sharp bunch. You know that. The man and his wife were naked and knew no shame kind of message. Because I don't think we hear enough about that. I have to tell you, honestly, my wife thought about staying home for this message. She said she had a headache. She always gets a little... Yes, she knows that line's in the sermon. You think I'm an idiot? She always gets a little concerned. She wrote it, by the way. No, uh, she always gets a little concerned about how honest I might be on the subject. I did a message similar to this a few years ago, and I told my youngest daughter what I was going to talk about. I said, you okay with that? She said, you sick freak. <laughs> I, I, I heard about a man and his wife. They were having some problems at home, and they were giving each other the silent treatment. Anybody ever have the silent treatment happen in there? And uh, suddenly the man realized the next day he needed his wife to help wake him up at 5 a.m. for an early morning business flight. I mean, he just, you know, he couldn't wake up without her help, and so he needed her to help him. But he did not want to be the first to break the silence and lose, whatever that means. So he wrote on a piece of paper, please wake me at 5 a.m., and he left it where he knew she would find it. The next morning, a man woke up uh, only to discover it was 9 a.m., and he missed his flight, furious. Uh, he was about to go see his wife, why she hadn't awoke him. And he found a note uh, beside the bed that said, it's 5 a.m., wake up. <laughs> There's a snake in my boot. To infinity and beyond.